in the earning guys let's have a little look okay the, one of the first things it says to do is fill the, the weight they film up with the, the ballast so I've tried to make a little paper funnel I don't know if it's going to work Just give it a little go Quite slowly. Put it in very slowly, it may go through. Seems a bit, a bit slow. Looks like we're gonna have to keep helping it in. Tell the missus is in work and doing this in the house. She'd be throwing me right out the garden if she was here. Anyway, that's going to take a while, so I'm going to crack on with that. Back soon, guys. Come up with a better way of doing it, guys. Just cut the coke bottle in off. And feeding it in slowly this way. Pretty much it. A little bit tricky at first, but once I worked out how to, to do that, it's made it a little bit life a little bit easier. Now to get the over on quickly before she gets back. So hopefully this will give you a better idea. So solvent welded everything got the pipe on warmed that pipe up with my hot egg and got that on that length of pipe i can alter if i ever want to lengthen it or shorten it i can either take the push fit off cut it shorten it or um i've got adapters that you can lengthen it a straight piece push fit extension so what I'm going to do now, that's obviously going to sit in the bottom of the pond. I'm going to run the pipe up from there, a couple of feet, and then go across at an angle onto the ledge on the back end of my pond. And like I say, with these push fits, fairly easy. I'll just cut the length I need, pop that in the end, and that'll run over to my pump. Um, so I'm going to get that done. Not ideal weather to be tinkering about today. Um, I'm going to try and get my retro drain fitted. What I'm thinking of doing, obviously I got two large air stones running there. Um, I think I'm going to knock them off. Obviously winter's coming now as well. Um, and that retro drain has got a big air ring. So I'm going to put my pump onto that and just run the bottom drain air for the next few months and see how it goes. 
haven't even got my nets off today. Look, it's so miserable and wet. Fish have slowed down quite a lot. I don't know what you guys are like. The water temp now is down to 10 degrees. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of flashing still. Um, but most of these treatments, they all say when the water's 10 degrees or less, you can't treat them. So I don't know. I can't even really do anything about it this time of year, I suppose. Other than salt. I've never used salt before. I like the, the sound of it, but I've never done it. The only thing that puts me off, I do like my lilies and they would kill them. So I'd rather have to get them out and put them in water. Um, or don't salt. Seems to be various opinions of salt. Some people rave about it and others warn you against it. It's a tricky subject, I, I suppose. But salt is a is a brilliant healer. It's like if you if you've got a cut in your leg and you go in the sea, you know, you soon clears that up. So salt is is fantastic as a healer. Anyway, don't know what your thoughts are. Right, let's crack on with this pump. Okay, so I've lifted the pump out. Um, this particular pump is a Pontec 18,000 litre. Um, so it's a pretty good pump. I've had it a few years. Works a treat, never had any issues. I'm going to take it out of the casing, tip it over. It's a couple of screws. It's just two screws there, and then it'll just pop it out of the casing. Um, and I'll be able to see what I need then to connect it up. So I'll just get that done. Well, I'm out here where there's not the best. I don't know why I'm doing it today, but you know what it's like, guys. Once you've got something in your head, then you start. Anyway, taking the pump out of the cover. So there's the pump. I've made an adapter that's going to thread on there. Luckily I had a bit of um, old intercooler pipe, turbo intercooler pipe, rubber um, hose, so I've managed to join that. Solvented the hose tail in, um, again heated the pipe up with the hot air gun, and that's all on rock solid. So I'm going to thread that onto there. That's going to go onto there. The pump is then going to sit on this shelf. Don't know if you can see the bottom there. I think you can. And then it, once you get to there, she drops down then another probably three foot, two and a half foot. It's about five foot deep in the middle of the pond is. Um, on this ledge here is about two and a half foot, so, so I'm going to crack on now before it gets too wet. Okay guys, so this is what it's going to look like uh, when it's in the water. So there's a little vent valve on the top, which helps prime the pump and stops you getting any airlocks. So everything's on. I'm going to go up and then I've got an elbow then on the pump which is going to go down the bottom. Just make sure the bang is on right. All the little stones are inside now to weight it down. Got a fair length of airline, fair play, plenty of airline. So I'm going to try and get it in the pond now um, and I'll be back in a bit. Some of the coffee finishing finishing off. I've done an amendment today on my feeder. Now the only one thing I could fault this feeder on 
because sometimes if it's raining the food was getting stuck on the chute so I've done a little mod um, I fitted a little scraper onto the bottom which will stop the rain hitting the top now it's early days but it's been letting out the food fine it's been getting through there um, so hopefully now when it's raining it's only got that bottom centimetre to get stuck on and I think when the food gets down there it should get through anyway got the wheat germ in now obviously it's colder um, they seem to be enjoying it it's a bit wet now I'll give them a little bit of food later and you, you can see what you think. Their appetite has gone a little bit. It's not as, uh, they're not snapping at the top now like they were. As soon as that temp gets down to 10, they slow right down at them. Uh, things to come guys. Winter's looming. I haven't even, like I say, moved my nets today. While we're on about nets, I've never covered my pond in the winter. Um, I've always left it open. I mean, you know, we're in the UK. I don't think we get drastic cold temperatures. I mean, the, the pond is reasonably deep, so, you know, I've never really suffered. But this year, I was thinking of getting some covers just to go on maybe even half of it some polycarb even if I just do half of it so they can go and shade um, under there from mainly the wind really I'm not trying to warm the pond I mean I can't afford to heat the pond like some people do um, you know the heating bills are enough now with the four in the household without heating the fish as well you know I love my fish, but uh, <laughs> can't afford to keep them warm. So yeah, I'm, that's what I'm thinking of doing: some polycarb, and probably just do half, half the pond. And I should be able to just screw it straight into the wood, just to hold it down. So I'll get it. I'll do half of it, see what it's like, um, and go from there. I'll have to go online, order some up. I'm going to get in for a minute, it's getting a bit wet now. Catch you soon. be mad out here today guys but I'm day two of the weekend shitty weather but I gotta finish what I gotta do um, back in work so gotta be done today let's crack on okay as you can see that's the way it's working off the bottom I think what I'm gonna do it doesn't seem to want to sit too well with the water in that solid pipe so I'm gonna fit I'm gonna try and fit that bottom piece and then put a flexible pipe on the top section and see if that helps so should help it sit on the bottom a little bit better so I'm gonna have a crack at that next
I ever use Jubilees, I always get insulating tape and I tape right round the train just because obviously they are sharp edges on them. So I tape it right up. It does tend to hold on if you put enough of it on. Um, but, but that's what I do. It just I don't like, obviously they can knock on, on these things, but they are quite, you know, soft really. There's a bit of movement in them. There's no jagged edges, but there that is. So I'm gonna tape all that down now. So that's the finished article. Um, that would be pretty good now, there's no jagged edge. I do keep an eye if it does, uh, I'll, I do pull the pump out every month or so just to give it a clean. Obviously this is new, I haven't used it before, no doubt it will need cleaning, so I just inspect this then and if need be put a new one on. It's not the best out here again guys, absolutely pouring down. I'm cleaning my filters at the same time. Um, just makes sense while you're getting wet, you may as well get drenched properly. Pond looks a lot bigger without the lilies in there. Anyway, let's crack on, catch you soon. Well, I've got it in the pond now, guys. Um, I haven't wired up the air yet, I'm going to do that next. But it's, it's in there and the pump is on so it's back in operation it seems to be settling on the bottom properly now so um, pretty happy with that but just I'm gonna I'm gonna break five minutes I'm gonna get the kettle on have a cup of and warm up a bit yeah the pond is back without those lilies it looks at Surprising, it looks a lot bigger now. Not that I mean, it is, it is five and a half meters long anyway, but it does look bigger. Hmm, food for thought. Back in a bit. Well, it's early days yet, but it's up and running. Um, plenty of air coming off it, in fairness. It's a good, uh, there's a good, about, I'd say it's about a metre of airline going around that and it's uh, pushing quite a bit. So I've turned my other ones off. I'm just going to leave it run off that now. Don't know whether I'll put the air off in the winter. Um, I don't normally run air in the winter, but uh, I'll have a think about that one. Weighted the lilies down now, I've cut them right back. Um, they should survive there now, they usually do. So lay back, weighted down, cut back, and what I did note this as well when I was, I don't know if you can see some little ones now over there. I noticed about six or seven small fish. They're black at the moment now. I assume they goldfish because I got one or two goldfish in here, and I did get rid of a load at the beginning of the season. So no doubt they goldfish. It'd be nice if they were koi, but there's about five or six of them. So we'll soon find out. But I, my gut feeling is they're going to be goldfish. And throw them on a bit of food. So this is the Medicoy wheat German garlic. They do seem to enjoy it. Well, he's getting some pellets in there, isn't he? 
they're not as lively as they used to be but some of them like that one there he, he's had quite a lot it's my Shukoi. I'm sure he's grown already this one here um, since I put him in he don't stop eating in fairness and uh, he's doing really well my other little new ones are still in hiding um, don't see them that often but they do come out they tend to hide under the folds of the liner I've got down by there, don't know if you can see it. Laying in there now. <laughs> they tend to hide in there. I don't know why they hide. Every time I've put new fish in, small ones, they always hide. Let's run a little bit more. It's nice to see them feed. Well, season's coming to an end now, guys. Some winter's upon us. Like I say, like I said earlier, I'm gonna probably gonna put some polycarb over half of the pond just to take the the wind chill off that end and see what it looks like. Can easily screw it down into the wood, so I think if I get three meter lengths they will the three meters then will just sit from there across and I'll probably get them two meter wide so if I get two of them to start with three by twos and uh, we'll see what it's like Okay guys, I'm going to end the video there. I've been absolutely soaked doing this the last two days, but uh, luckily I've got a, an all-in-one bike uh, uh, waterproof, which has kept me bone dry. So, um, although I've been, looked like I've been soaked on the outside, I've been uh, quite dry. So, I'm going to end it there guys. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Catch you soon. All the best.